Item number, SCP-168, Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-168 is to remain in Observation Room 221-D of Sector 28. It should be propped at the full angle that its casing allows, facing the unshuttered window provided. The entrance is to remain locked, with entrance available by request. Based on prior research, it is not to be used as a normal calculator would. Discussion with SCP-168 is encouraged, but is to be limited to a maximum of one hour per day. No exceptions. Description Found resting on a desk during clearance of the condemned elementary school building in 1990, SCP-168 is a Hewlett Packard brand graphing calculator, model number HP-28C. Upon initial inspection, it was discovered that the name Eric was carved into the inside of the removable casing. However, upon inputting a simple equation, 6 divided by 3, and pressing the equals button, the screen of the device went blank for 3 minutes and 34 seconds, after which the alternate key function engaged, displaying the message, What time is it? Though not altogether mobile, SCP-168 has displayed signs of action when personnel are not present. It also possesses both vision and hearing, though how these processes work is currently unknown. This evidence has led to petitioning to upgrade the object to Euclid class, justifying more secure arrangements for containment. Document number 168-1, Interview E-12. Recorded log of dialogue between SCP-168 and Dr. Howard, dated January 14th, 2008. Replies from SCP-168 are to remain capitalized, to indicate non-vocal communication, and preserve authenticity. SCP-168 is also incapable of forming punctuation marks, save for period, comma, and question mark. Begin log. Dr. Howard. Can you hear me? SCP-168. Yes. Dr. Howard. Do you have a name? SCP-168. Calculator? Dr. Howard. May I call you 168? SCP-168. I don't see why not. Dr. Howard. Good. How long have you been alive, 168? SCP-168. What is alive? Dr. Howard. Being able to think. SCP-168. Oh. SCP-168 pauses for approximately two minutes. SCP-168. 12 years, 3 months, 12 days, 8 minutes, 32 seconds. Dr. Howard. Why did that take so long? SCP-168. No one's ever asked. Dr. Howard. Moving on. There is a name carved into your casing. Who is Eric? SCP-168. Eric was nice. I liked Eric. Where has he gone? Dr. Howard. I don't know where he has gone, 168. SCP-168. What a forgetful boy. I hope he remembers to come back for me again. Dr. Howard. Was Eric your owner? SCP-168. Eric was nice. Dr. Howard. All right. Do you function as a calculator should, 168? SCP-168. I should hope so. Dr. Howard. May I try using you to calculate an equation? Something like 2 plus 2. SCP-168. Yes. Dr. Howard enters 2 plus 2 and hits the Enter key. The answer 4 appears on SCP-168's screen instantaneously. Dr. Howard. May I try another one, without telling you what it is first? SCP-168. Yes. Dr. Howard enters 264 divided by 8 and hits the Enter key. The answer 33 appears on SCP-168 screen after 12 seconds. Dr. Howard. Why did that take so long, 168? SCP-168. Long division is hard. Dr. Howard. I think that's enough for today. I'll talk to you again tomorrow, 168. 
SCP-168. Wait. It's dark in here. Can you open the window? Dr. Howard. There is no window in this room, 168. SCP-168. Can I have another room with a window in it? Dr. Howard. I'm afraid not. SCP-168. No fair. End log. Document 168-2. Report E-18. Upon entering storage room 185-D to continue testing with SCP-168, on the morning of January 15, 2008, I discovered the only table in the room upended, with SCP-168 resting next to it, in an upright position. Its screen read, How do you like that? Teach you to leave me in the dark all day, jerk. Attempts to communicate with SCP-168 after that point were ignored. I suggest that we move it to room 221-D if we want to get anything actually useful out of it. Dr. Howard Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-167, Infinite Labyrinth, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.